to do the gouache. So we see the gouache. We'll look at the new colors. Um, I've asked Rajat, who did some really awesome painting of his uh, birds. He's going to show us one of his birds. Then we're going to play one of his videos. It's about three minutes. We'll look at the other half of the gouache. And then Rajat can answer questions because you'll see his work um, that's totally using the gouache colors. So it's a great time to ask questions. Um, so with that, I'm going to go through the first 10 colors of gouache, and then we'll go, Rajat will go to you after that, okay? Okay, Rajat just said yes, he nodded his head. So let me bring this down and change cameras. Hello, Michael. So Michael's back in the US. Um, here we go. Hello, Sue. Hello, Etta. Hello, Kimberly. So I'm going to start with Ross Sienna. I make a mess of these tubes when I squeeze them. That's how I know when I've used one or not. This one's going to be Indian red. So, Belle, have you used gouache in your painting life? Many, many, many years ago, um, before you came out with it. Um, Josanya? Sonia? Josanya. No, I don't recall that. It, it was pre-1995. And wow. um, her, her son has a... Uh, line of uh, acrylics, but I think okay. it was an acrylic gouache. Ah, okay. Did you like it? Do you like using gouache? Back then, I really couldn't tell you the difference between acrylic, a gouache, a watercolor, and an oil. <laughs> that was the very beginning of my my painting career, so to speak. But I've gone through them all, and um, I've happily landed on on watercolors. Yeah, I think watercolors are, are awesome. So this first one is going to be raw sienna. So raw sienna, and one of the. Brandon Bassers has asked, how much water can you mix with a gouache? Um, really, it's, it's you can easily do one-to-one, -one, but at the end of the day, as Rajat was saying, it's it's really up to you. You know, I mean, it's it's kind of one of those things that you're going to try and you're going to figure some what works for you. It's really kind of what works for you. This is absolutely Indian red. So what color do you think this one is? Viridian. This one? No. Should be. Spring green. Chrome green. Perm green. Spring Permanent green. green light. Yes. Permanent green light. Permanent green. Yeah. Permanent green. Right. And what about that one? Is that wisteria? That's wisteria. I just saw this one on the mill instead of manufacturing. One mill had this color on it. Hmm. What do you think that one is? Hansa yellow. Hansa yellow. Hansa yellow. Medium. Hansa, Hansa yellow medium. Oh, yep. okay. Medium. Yep. That's why I wouldn't bet with any of you. You get them all. 
Okay. But now we'll try this one. This might be a little bit, a little harder. I think. Is that the yellow ochre? Who is that? Oh. Jen. Uh, Jen, you can't guess anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. I said that too, but my mute was on. <laughs> oh, Barbara, too. <laughs> <laughs> no more Jen, no more, no more Ethel. You guys get them like every single time. <laughs> so yes, you're right, Jen. That's correct. Hey, I'm at least I'm learning. Well, you know your colors. It's hard on, on the on the screen. So I'm sorry, one more time. I said it's hard on the screen. Yeah, you know it's, it's uh, a guess at colors. It is. Like we color correct on the website, um, but it's hard here. It is hard. So let me do, oh, I can show you that. I'm gonna get, now I have to change those out. You probably saw those. Okay, how about these two? This one might be pretty obvious. This one, maybe not so much. I'm change the paper out. Okay. How about how about that one? Lamp black. Lamp black. Yeah. And if you're doing oh, lamp yeah, black nice. watercolor versus gouache, you would see how much darker the lamp black and gouache really is. It is really, really dark. Okay. Yeah, it's very rich. And what do you think about that one? Permanent magenta or something. Or quinacridone magenta. Quinacridone, yes. That is correct. Quinacridone magenta. So that's two, four, six, eight. Oh, they're really pretty. So out in the out in manufacturing today, they were doing hands yellow medium as a gouache, and they were doing cat, cat orange you. The cat orange you, it's hard for me to even tell you how orange, it, it's just unbelievable how orange it is. Um, so the guys in distribution, some are wearing masks, some aren't wearing masks. We um, let it uh, be up to them as to which way they wanna go. So probably in a couple more months, I'll do a tour of the, um, of the manufacturing showing the three roll mill with color on it and the mixer with color. Cool. Oh, but yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I would like that. Yeah. Okay. There we go with that. John. Then, I yes. Don't, I don't really know that much about gouache. I've heard about it. Uh -huh. um, what is the real difference between that and watercolor? So the uh, gouache is a water media. Our, our gouache is the same exact pigment, the same exact binder, gum Arabic, as our watercolor. But the reason that we call it a water media is because that they're all opaque. So someone, for example, Lori would say, well, lamp black in watercolor is opaque, and that's true, but it's not as opaque as it is in the gouache. And every color in the gouache is okay. very opaque, it also has a matte, a matte appearance to it. Um, you could get yeah. watercolor from a lamp black. You'd have to add a lot of water to be able to do it. So could uh, you use gouache in place of like say egg tempera if you were painting icons? I don't know that. We can ask some of the artists that have, have done that. They're just, they're, it used to be made for the advertising industry. So when they oh. took pictures, there wouldn't be a flashback. Oh, uh, oh. You can use it for accent. In fact, in a couple of seconds, we're going to be showing Rajat's work, and then he's going to explain how he uses it. Because okay. Rajat comes from an advertising marketing background. So I think with that, two, four, six, eight, um, we have how many left? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19 left. I'm going to show you the watercolors too. So let's do, um, let me show you this, and then we'll go to Rajat, and then we'll come back to showing more. What color do you what 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 do you think this makes? What color does this make? 
So it's a little bit bigger than my hand. Maybe I should go to this camera here to see it better. Is this wash, John? This okay. is la lapis lazuli. This, this is a, no. this is a pigment. This is pigment. So th is we're going to start with blue? this. Cobalt. 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 That's a really blue? that's a really good that's a good 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 guess. Um, yeah, and men blue. Yeah, you weren't supposed to answer that, Gabriel. You need answer. <laughs> <laughs> What did he say? Spoiler. You gotta share. You gotta share the love. Spoiler. <laughs> yes, it's Jim and It's Blue. like the little kid that asks for homework on oh, Friday. Gabriel. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Excuse me. So that's wow. that's, that's twelve hundred dollars worth of pigment. Wow. Whoa. Oh, Yin Min. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's a damn expensive. Oh, it matches your shirt, John. Yeah. It's not. It's, it's, yeah. It's. Not too far. I love it. That's he cool. painted his shirt with that. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> I like that one. That's good. Okay, so right now what I'd like to do is um, introduce everybody to Rajat. You know Rajat. Rajat is from uh, India's brand ambassador. He's done some uh, paintings with the gouache, and I asked him if he would show us one his artwork. Mm -hmm. Then we would watch his movie. And then as I go back showing the rest of the colors, if you want to ask Rajat questions, he will answer questions. Well, I, I, uh, hi, John. Good Hello, to, uh, hi. So what? There we go. I insist. Uh, can you can you show the video first? I think that would be better. If you show the video first, then okay. I will uh, show the recording. All right. Yeah. So I think that will be now. more appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. That was going to show right. the video first. <clears throat> mm -hmm. okay. Hi, everybody. Hi, Drajat. Hi. Okay, I'm going to share screen now. There we go. So, I'm using paints. Today, I'm using Daniel Smith's one of the finest, one more finest creation, which is gouache. So, these are the colors they have come up with. They are mind blowing. Well, I am not using. Um, my finger because these are not sticks of course you can see them so these are the few colors which i've got and they are extraordinary so i'm using them I'm, i have used them some of them here so, so i'll show you this is Absolutely stunning. This is a gouache color. Pigments are you know, a little thicker. So I have used gouache before also. That time we used to make gouache color with an ape oak and all these things. But here it's a ready-made gouache. What do you call gouache color? These are mind blowing. So one should of course, try out. <clears throat> now, this is depending on each artist, how they are handling this particular color. So this is the first tone, in fact, I'm putting. So of course, I'm putting a little lighter so that my next, but uh, my next coat will be a little thicker, of course. Rajai, do you want us to and forward a little bit? Um, I know that from the start, um, vibrant. I, the video frame is not showing in full, but we can fast forward where you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can show you. So, is it visible now? Answer yellow medium. Uh, we oh, are yeah. screen sharing and this course, video. This okay, screen. now you can't do that. Okay. So, I'll show you the final one. This area, I've used this feral skull. Right? It takes little time as I do little slowly. Because 
we can help share the uh, artwork, the finished piece. Keep sharing with you once it's been done, right? Thank you. Okay, and we're gonna do the yeah. share screen of the finished piece. Yeah, please, that will one. be better. There you go. Wow, that is just so beautiful. That is amazing. I love it. That, yeah, right. fabulous. Wow, <clears throat> amazing. Thank you. See, I mean, my only thing was, you know, uh, every any which way, every artist should use. I mean, all of us are using particular medium in a different, many different way. Similarly, here I have used lighter background. You know, background that uh, first tone I have kept it very lighter. But if you see that uh, the, towards the neck, towards the beak of the birds, it's much thicker. You know, the pigments are thicker. So it is giving me an opportunity to, you know, keeping the, all, as we all are watercolor artists, we keep the paper, lighter tone remain while putting the darker tone. But this is the benefit of this particular, even you can create, after putting the darker tone also, you can create the lighter tone out of that. Because of the pigment. Rajat, yeah. the background on the top of the head, is that a watercolor or a gouache? It is entirely done with a gouache. So ah. that is the fun. If you see that there are certain textures being created. Okay, so, so it does granulate. It does granulate yeah. a little bit. Yeah, it does, it does. So okay. if you see, that is why combination permutation, the more we do, the more we'll get the, you know, the more we experiment, the more we'll get the result. Thank you. But this is a pheno phenomenal color. I mean, the pigments are because I have got uh, 11 colors. Out of that, only I have, you know, I'm yet to get this. So, the t earlier what happened, we used to make the colors. So, nowadays it's so easy. Like, you have to just open the tab, uh, cap, and pour the color on the palette and use them, start using them. If you see the richness and the, uh, these colors are, of course, matte. You know, gouache, that's a, meant to be. Gouache has never been shiny. Gouache are uh, basically matte colors. Mm -hmm. And as the DS has got, even they're coming up with the Hansa yellow, it is. it looks like one particular yellow, but that yellow has got maybe, you know, 15 colors, shades of yellow mixed up with, you know, the Hansa yellow, medium or any, any, any particular colors. I'm not talking about one particular, all the colors are, you know, pre-mixed. So it is giving us uh, extra mileage, extra benefit. Instead of, we, we don't have to pour the color on a, you know, uh, mix the color on a palette and use that. But this particular gouache is a, is a phenomenal stuff. It's phenomenal stuff. So this is the first job which I, after getting the tube, um, I have done this, this bird. Just to show that, you know, the darker portion where I have used the opaque colors, if you see towards the eyes, the, the colors are really opaque. But if you see, the, uh, you know, towards the head of the bird and the background of the, uh, you know, the painting, there's a much lighter and one can create certain amount of textures also. Right? So, thank you. Thank you very much, Rajan. It's beautiful work. Most welcome. Thank so you. Amazing. Thank you. It is amazing. I did want to show you something from the question that Angela had. So this right here is the um, ochre. Oh. <laughs> uh, there we go. Let's see. Okay. So here's the ochre, and you can see the granulation. So the, the, the question do you, the does the gouache granulate? So you can see the granulation. Yeah, it does. It does. Yes. If you pour little little more water on that, it will, yeah. it will granulate more. Yeah. And and it is and entirely depending on the artist how much water they are using while using this particular medium. Yeah, you if can they're using more. yeah. See, like yeah. Uh, it started granulating. Look yeah. at it. Yeah. Although it is a big, you know, opaque colors, but it started getting lit. So you don't want that. You just use more, more of the mass tone. Um, but yeah, that's that's interesting because we'll see yeah. that in the cascade green as well. 
So if you want, I'm going to show you the next set of colors, but if you want to ask Rajat questions, please do so. That was the main reason I kept that, you know, surface with a lighter tone as a dark color. So that one can make out, if you pour water, how it is, you know, creating textures and granulate, as well as if you are using opaque colors directly, how, you know, rich that could be. It blocks the other colors also. One can use that. Rajat, do you paint one color with the gouache? Do you paint one color right on top of the next one, almost like you could do with a... Um, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yeah, you can. Yes, you can. Rajat, Especially in... Uh, yes, please. Oh, can, can you paint a lighter color on top of a darker color? Yes, you can. Once it gets once it gets dry, you can do that. Once it's dry, that's, yeah, okay. Yeah, wow. that, that's the wow. benefit. That that's the benefit of uh, the gouache. You know that particular thing oh, you will not be able okay. to do in watercolor. Okay. But in the gouache, you can do that. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I would be able to use those for the icons because with icons you start out from the darkest. I'm sorry, from the lightest to the dark. It's the other way around. From watercolor. Yes. So I would be able see, to see that is why we, we have to, yeah, that is why we have chosen a uh, sub object called bird. Bird has got, you know, the feathers get merged with the background. If you see the if you notice you must have noticed that how it's smoothly got merged with the background. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Although the background was here, background was green and the bird was yellow. So it has merged. And I've used that. Thank you. Rajat, is that, are those colors permanent or if you wet them again, can you uh, like uh, move them? It is little permanent than watercolor, but it comes out. If you pour water, it will come out. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. It's not that permanent. It's not like acrylic. <laughs> Okay, John? so what color do you think that is right there? John, we have a question yes. for you from MN. This is in Zoom. Why did we choose the 22 colors to begin with for gouache? Because it has to do with the alignment of the sun and the moon. No, I'm just kidding. It has to do with, <laughs> it has to do with the uh, number of slots in the rack that we have. So there's a, an 11 <laughs> slot. So for, for two of them, it takes 22. <laughs> no, it's a really good question. So this you, one forgot, is, you forgot to mention Mars as well, alignment. Oh, Mars, yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, so this, this question planet. should, this is, uh, it is hundred percent depending on the subject with what you are working. If you are doing one particular subject, where maybe, you know, sepia and the black can work out. There you may not use, you know, all 26 colors. But there are color, there are certain uh, subjects where require a lot of colors. Like, as like, I'm talk, I, can, I can talk about the birds. It has got a phenomenal color, shades of colors. So there, yeah. there 22 is less. Well, the, the main reason for 22 is the stores put racks in and stores when they're in Europe and in some small stores here in the U.S., the, the, the space is so uh, important because, you know, they want to make sure they're servicing their customers. Um, so we brought out 22. We'll, bring, we'll be bringing out another 22. So we'll have at least 44 in gouache. This is the burnt sienna. And this is, what do you think this one right here is? Light or something like that. Hansa yellow light, that is correct. Rajat? First one is yes. lavender? Yep. Lavender. Okay. Rajat, we have a question on Facebook land and they want to, uh, this question is from Sue and she says, what brushes are best for gouache? The same brushes one can use for watercolor. So we don't need to, you know, differentiate brushes. The same brush can be used in the brushes we are using for the watercolor. The same thing can be used in water uh, gouache too. Thank you, Rajat. And as I personally, thank you. 
and I personally use most of the brushes are natural hair, not the synthetic, except one or two, you know, um, one or two. Uh, but mostly I'm using uh, synthetic. Like Dartana series is mixed up with uh, this uh, Da Vinci Dartana has got, uh, what do you call it? Synthetic brushes. But mostly I'm using natural. And your friend George Politi says hello from Greece. Hi, George. Hi, George. <laughs> hello, George. Hello. So this one right here is the hands of yellow light. How about this one right here? Permanent green, spring green. Or spring green. Spring green. Spring green. Spring green. Spring green. Spring green. And green. this one? Hansa yellow. Hansa dark. A yellow deep. Deep. Oh, deep. Wow. Yep, that was right, Mark. Hansa yellow deep. How deep. about this one? Pyral orange. Pyral orange. Pyral orange, yeah. We have Victoria now watching from Facebook. OK. She's a brand ambassador. And how from about Ukraine. This how about that from one? Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah. This is ultramarine. It's not ultramarine. French. This is French. looks like co <laughs> cobalt blue. Cobalt blue. Cobalt. It's cobalt blue. All right. All right. I'll get ready for the next set here. So we have. <laughs> Seven more gouache to go. And then we'll look at the five watercolors. Um, I did want to show you the C Lab today. We're going to have, according to my clock, we're going to have plenty of time. John? So, yes? Uh, MN, who asked why did you choose these 20 plus colors? Uh, she was more concentrated on why these and not others. Was not the number. <laughs> well, you know, it's when you have 280 colors, it's it's kind of tough to choose 22. But these were what we believe would be most artists could use these colors right out right out of the gate. Um, and then uh, the next next series of colors will actually be different than these. Mm -hmm. So because you thought that these were the most uh, could be more useful to the artist. These are the ones that we felt were most use, useful in the gouache to begin with. Um, you know, you have to have a really good white. We have a really good white and a really good black. We have a really good black, um, a good red because we have the pyrrol red. Uh, softer, we have the pyrrol, um, we have the um, scarlet. So we tried to figure ones that would be more, most useful. In this gouache, titanium white is extremely good. Let me tell you. These are I very saw that in yours. Good. <coughs> yeah, it's I saw extremely that in yours. good. Yeah. Or the other. Well, the question what you asked, like using gouache is much easier than the transparent watercolor. Mm -hmm. Yes, because here you don't have to keep the transparency if you need that. Like keeping the transparency, you can you can even do that. You know, opaque color on top of that, you can put some lighter color also, which we cannot do the same exercise in watercolor, transparent watercolor, the way we do normally, because the pigment is so thick. So it is much easier than the watercolor. But in like you choose one bird. Oh, I have a, a beautiful bird that I want to paint. So right. in what, uh, how would you choose whether you want to use the sticks or the gouache, or you would just, uh, have you ever painted the same subject in both gouache and watercolor, for example? Have you ever done that? Just yeah, the gouache, uh, gouache, this is the work which I did. I mean, I've showed you and I, I can show you now also again. This is the work which I did in a, a Daniel Smith gouache, first uh, work yes. which I did. Yeah, so, but one thing is there, even for a plain air also, if you use gouache, it is much easier, what I'm saying, much easier than the transparent water. Because here, uh, it will be, you can handle it much easier, easy way than the, and it, you can add value easy way than the watercolor. Watercolor is even more challenging. Uh-huh. You know, yes. Because there you, you need to keep layers after layers. 
you know, first layer, second layer, third layer, you need to retain them. But here, what is happening, you, on this also, you can do that, which for exactly which I did. You know, I kept that, you know, I treat them as a transparent watercolor as well as opaque color. Yes. Okay. Right. Thank you. Anybody okay. else has experience in painting in wash, maybe? Or uh, I think we had a question from Anne-Marie. Um, maybe uh, she's uh, she's not in, uh, you're not in your home, right? But you would like to show us where you are in the gallery where you are, maybe? Thank you. I, uh, Giovanni, that is so good to see and so encouraging to see the technique. And when you talk about the magic to the eyes, that makes a lot of sense to me because uh, we know color vibrates and what you're playing with is the vibration by putting that line right next to a line right next to a line. That's really good to see your work. Thanks for sharing that before the rest of us can access our gouache also. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. Mesmerizing, yeah. So I've traveled up to Nebraska, which is about 500 miles north of where I'm at. And I have a gallery, um, a gallery show right now. I'm gonna give the artist spe speech in about two hours. And um, this series that I have here, my computer is low on battery. I'm hoping it'll be okay. This is the series from the Name of God series here. And it is 200 paintings in all Daniel Smith pigment black 11. And here we have another. Can you bring, could you bring the phone nearer, please, so that we can. Sure. Yeah. These, these are small ones. So these ones here are uh, three inches by five inches. And then I have a medium sized one here. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at granulation with pigment black 11. So this is watercolor still. And working with flocculation and reticulation. Uh huh. And abstraction looking at value. And see how they were able to fit. Uh, about 90, I believe about 90 of the pieces in this series, all into the gallery. What pigment did you say you used? Pigment black 11, lunar black, to look at granulation. So here, this example is a great example of great flocculation. Is the camera focus on that well? Yeah, yeah. Is that lunar black? Lunar black, yes, which is the transparent black. Yes. Pieces that are denser. So many, so many different uh, possibilities, no? With just for one color, right? Mm -hmm. Right, the entire series. I have right, 200 paintings in this series. This one I appreciate because it has both the, the reticulation, and the granulation, the, yeah. Uh, yeah. I like this, one, the value change within it. Uh-huh. There we go. Super. Here you can see the little rivulets forming very clearly coming down here. I wish the camera would focus better, but. Very nice. Here we go. Uh -huh. So right now in the gallery, we have about 90 of the 200 paintings uh -huh. in the series. And, um, Thanks for sharing. And Thanks for wanting to share this with everybody. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie. I think we lost John, and uh, for a little while, I also got disconnected. But thankfully, we have co-hosts in the room. We had Giovanni. That's why we did not go off air. I just wonder whether uh, Gabe has had a chance to share. Let's see what he's working on. He's been painting. Yeah. Let me just add this spotlight while we switch to Gio's uh, top camera. I'm sorry, Gabriel's yeah. camera. Gabriel, yes. Yeah. Gabriel is this one. Okay, let me see this one there. All right. 
Hello. Hi. So, this is what I was working on earlier. And what we have is my little palette. I have red, yellow, blue, and white. And I was able to mix these colors. So it looks like it's granulated, but it's not. It's just the rough paper. Oh, and so I got to a place where I wanted to quit looking at it for a while. Gabriel, whose rough paper is it? Um, What's power on the paper? Bohong. 140. Okay. Rough. Bohong. Yeah. And 140 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. And this piece here, I was out plein air painting today with some friends. And this is about 90% done. And I'm now putting in gouache details. So that so is what we're start. That is gouache. What uh, gouache? Uh, sorry, what a color? And you. This is all watercolor. watercolor. Okay. And now I'm putting in the details. In here, I'm actually using the gouache white. Mm hmm. And I'm highlighting some of these rocks. Yeah, super. So it was raining today and very windy. So when you're out playing air painting, it could be pretty rough. And now I can spend time putting in all the details. Yeah, looks super. We have a comment mm -hmm. here by Raffaele thinking, uh, he mentioned about the brushes. Uh, he says, I think some painters may want to use slightly stiffer brushes than the watercolor ones. It was just a comment. What is your opinion, Gabriel, on that? I have uh, some brushes set aside just for uh, the gouache. Um, I want to preserve some of the brushes I have. And uh, I'm just, I buy good quality brushes and I want to take good care of my equipment. So I think it does help to have like a good soap so that you can clean these. But uh, yeah, I have separate brushes for watercolor and for gouache. Do you, is stiffness one of the reasons or not? Uh, so that's a really good question because in watercolor, we have a brush that uses lots of water yeah. and we use another brush that uses less water. So this one I need for watercolor because I can get these light areas. So this is pigment with lots of water. We have paint with less water done with these brushes, okay? And now when I go to put some of this gouache, I want a brush that holds less water. Perla, I think this is a Perla, isn't it? This is a Perla number 12. Mm -hmm. Oh, 10, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> and Buffy mentions that pink soap is wonderful and smells so good. Pink. I still want to make the soap too. Pink is a brand. Um, Thanks, Gio uh, uh, Gab, for sharing. Um, I I'm chatting with John <laughs> Ambassador. He got disconnected too. Um, it happens. It can happen. Uh, so 
I know that John would have loved to share about the new look and updated look of our C Lab. It's in, it's been there, but it's been updated. Uh, but he will reserve the topic in one of the future sessions. And perhaps for the remaining, <clears throat> we have around 12 minutes or so. He's requested if we could have Gio's help, Giovanni, if you could help us uh, do the swatch or show our burnt umber ultramarine blue. Uh, ah, love it. <laughs> that was Adam. So Gio, <laughs> you are always a Boy Scout. Adam. Adam. <laughs> so uh, one of the- Oh, no, sorry about that. I thought I was <laughs> muted. <laughs> Adam said he loved it. He loves it. <laughs> it's okay, Adam. So we're gonna have Geo. Let me just remove uh, Gabriel's spotlight. Okay, we're all clear. And if we could just show, if you have the swatch ready for our burnt umber um, or ultramarine blue, uh, pyro red, and the remaining color, and and especially the granulating effect of cascade green. Yeah, now. Yeah, whichever, yes. whichever is near you. If you have red amber and ultramarine okay. blue. Ultramarine blue, yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I show these. We already have some um, good reading information to begin with, with our gouache. And I'm just gonna paste our product page for gouache in the chat uh, for those who just tuned in. Okay. I use a, a small tiny flat brush. <laughs> Isn't that ultramarine, uh, Giovanni? Yeah, ultramarine blue. This is on, on Mars black ground, and this is a paper. And this is a thick from the tube directly is very mat materic and opaque. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful color and beautiful wash. Uh, can you put the, the paper a bit up, please? Oh, I see. Thank you. See, now that's that's beautiful, the beautiful blue. stunning, stunning blue. Yeah. yeah, that's just ultramarine. Beautiful. Uh, uh, can, can you bring the, the, the whole thing up? No. Um, what you did? Um, pop you so, pop you so. That's it. Okay. Yes, thank you. This is now I tell. Um, on your palette, do you have your pyro red there? Yeah. Pyro red. Okay. These are the specific colors that John wanted to uh, show. Is the black you're painting on, is that uh, ground? Yeah. Mars black, right? The Mars, Mars black. black. Yeah. What flag do we have now? Blue and red. Blue it's and almost red. French, no? French or or dark. Yeah, blue, Many blue red and white. Yeah. <laughs> That's red, Many white, and blue. Yeah. The United Kingdom of Great Britain. Well, <laughs> also. Combined, like. 
is very, very opaque color. And what brush is that, Gio? It's a, it's a flat brush with Borchani and Bonazzi in number two. Yeah, Borchani and Bonazzi. Synthetic? Yeah, synthetic. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, y'all, I made a schoolboy error today of um, not realizing that the clocks have gone back. Exactly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I'm late today. Sorry. Oh. See, this particular result you will never get in watercolor. You know, on a black background, if you put, put red or blue, you will not be able to get this uh, result. That is the beauty of gouache. But another thing is, in a watercolor, if you use gouache a little bit of, that will come under the umbrella of mixed media. It will not re remain, you know, watercolor only, which is come under the, you know, umbrella of mixed media because this is a different medium. If but it is water soluble. Yeah, if, if you're in a jurid um, competition or, or something like that, and it, it says watercolor, then it's best not to use gouache in gouache. that sense. Yeah. Because no. it isn't watercolor. <coughs> it General is, it is not. This is puff titanium, right? Puff titanium, yeah. Here in the United States, uh, the term being used currently with the new changes is water soluble me mediums. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you're applying for a juried show, it's very, uh, you should look to see if it says watercolor only. Uh, some mm -hmm. places will say uh, only transparent medium, but there will be sometimes shows that it's a water media show and you would maybe want to select mixed media just so that the buyer that is buying your painting knows that they're not buying a watercolor, but this is a mixed media, meaning it has watercolor and gouache. Right. Gabriel, I have a question. Concerning the water, water soluble media, would that extend so far as to include the acrylic lines? Yep. Yes. That is true. Uh, acrylic oh. is a water-based medium. Okay, thank you. And anything that is dissolved by water. Exactly. Yeah. Wait, um, does it include fluid acrylics, for example? Yeah. So would this yes. could we go so far as to include water-soluble oils? I mean, that's that, oh, that that's really pushing it. That's and... stretching it a bit far. <laughs> In, in essence, it's just it, it can dissolve, <coughs> but it, it the normal dissolving chemical for oil is obviously things like turps. I can only speak mm -hmm. on the behalf of watercolor societies because those are the ones I'm involved in. Um, and it's just good to read through their uh, prospectus because you'll learn that maybe it's a different type of uh, surface as well, um, not just mm -hmm. the paint. Uh, so, but things are opening up, which is really nice because COVID changed a few things. And now people are back to wanting to come to the galleries and see this beautiful paintings because these paintings, um, they don't really capture completely well uh, on digital format, especially if it has, uh, you know, the iridescence. And so, but that's the nice thing about gouache is the gouache does not reflect. So what, when you're photographing your gouache, it looks just as well as good um on camera and that's what Rajat was saying earlier so which yeah, color was yeah, this yeah. Giovanni was it raw amber burst amber. Amber. amber and now apply the parallel scarlet the last okay 
Okay. I'm really, yeah. I'm really happy that a lot of these colors, uh, the are m some of my favorite are in the gouache, and so I'm already painting and using these colors in watercolor, and now to use them in gouache, uh, my eye is kind of used to using the pyro orange and mixing the beautiful uh, ultramarine blue, which is one of my favorite colors. And so it's pretty exciting. Like um, I could really punch uh, the opacity of the, just the opacity of a color to really push the transparent in. So when I'm showing with oil painters, um, oil painters have that beautiful like buttery look and watercolor has that gorgeous juicy look when it's nice and wet like now we could really push maybe even uh, create some new uh, works by using both mediums together Thank well you, remember girl. that uh, this Dutch painter uses aqua aqua media or aqua color he uses a watercolor and water soluble oil you remember that together so, can mix yes yeah, i remember that yeah. so we can we can mix the the mediums uh, i don't know the blending medium <laughs> they are all water media actually thank you so much um geo gab uh, Rajat and Angela, I know John would have loved to stay. He's trying to, I think, log in, but it will take um, some time to get back in. But yeah, I think we started really well. Uh, John pretty much covered swatching most of the colors. Um, and tomorrow, we're going to have uh, Raffaele Ciccolini. Um, for mm -hmm. our friends in Europe, please do not forget the time, your login time tomorrow for our live session is at 6.30 p.m. Yeah. yeah. And next week, next week, it will be normal time, right? Oh, why is America yeah. falling in line with UK time next week? Uh, it's, I think Saturday. Yeah. We, yeah. yeah. Saturday, US time yeah. will change uh, starting Sunday, right? Yeah. Right. Saturday. Can I yeah. just Sunday morning. The, okay. the gouache. Uh, is it on general release now? Um, yes, and I think um, yeah, our retailers will will have their stocks anytime soon. I will take it will take longer kind of... for those outside the US, yeah. but please um, be on the lookout. Contact your favorite retailers and find out more about when they're gonna have have it ready for you guys. Right. Okay. So we'll see you okay. all tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Anna. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.